Hi folks, Dr. Robert Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Now this video is going to be a comparison between um, two compounds that can be taken for anxiety uh, and those compounds are GABA and L-theanine. Now I've done separate videos on uh, GABA and L-theanine and um, you know those, I've gone into both of the compounds in quite um, some depth in terms of, uh, of their benefits but I wanted to actually compare the two because um, some studies have actually looked at um, the similarities and the differences between the two compounds. Now the reason that this is an interesting comparison is because of the similarities in the structure between L-theanine and GABA. Now GABA is a, an amino acid that is used as a neurotransmitter in the brain and uh, GABA has an effect on the brain such that it decreases electrical excitability and therefore it has a calming and a relaxation effect. The general effect from um, uh, the release of, of the neurotransmitter GABA in the brain is a general relaxing effect. Um, now GABA can be taken as a supplement and it appears that GABA does cross the blood brain back blood blood brain barrier and get into the brain uh, but it may also have peripheral effects as well for example it's been investigated and shown to be very good at lowering blood pressure so it has this central nervous brain effect and it also may have a peripheral effect but generally supplements of GABA have been shown to be effective at causing um, a calmative uh, relaxing uh, effect um, and certain foods contain high amounts uh, reasonably high amounts of GABA and those foods when they're eaten they also have similar relaxing effects so the effects of GABA are quite well reported it does appear to be an effective supplement uh, and it does appear to have this anxiolytic uh, effect uh, in humans and animals uh, which means that it can be used uh, as a, a supplement if you are uh, you know if you're suffering from for example the general uh, anxiety disorder L-theanine uh, is a compound uh, an amino acid that's found in tea it's found almost exclusively in tea um, now tea, the tea plant um, manufactures L-theanine uh, in its roots, it, it manufactures L-theanine from, um, uh, from glutamic acid. Uh, the L-theanine then is transported into the leaves of the tea uh, and it accumulates in the leaves where it actually makes up about 50% of the uh, amino acids uh, that are present in the leaves and that's actually quite a lot of, it's about 1-2% one, one of the dry weight of the leaf. So L-theanine is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a very it, although it's only found in tea it's found in tea in very high concentrations and if you drink tea you will have a quite a high intake of L-theanine um, the amount of L-theanine that's in a cup of tea is probably about 50 to 60 milligrams something like that but again it really depends on the on the plant that the um, the leaves were taken from because the different plants will accumulate L-theanine at different amounts it depends how old the leaf is it depends where the plant's been growing so there is a, a quite a lot of variety there now L-theanine um, it can be taken as a supplement or it can be you know it can be consumed through tea and again studies have shown that L-theanine is able to cause uh, a relaxing effect uh, in humans and animals uh, it has a very similar effect to GABA uh, it has this calmative relaxing effect uh, and again this may be due to the fact that it's able to decrease electrical excitability in the brain now this is where we come to the comparison both compounds appear to be able to get into the brain uh, and both compounds appear to have very similar uh, general properties um, one particular study which compared uh, the two compounds and I will put the link to this study in the comments box below this video so that you can have a look at it if you wish to uh, one study actually compared uh, 100 milligrams of GABA um, with 200 milligrams of L-theanine and what it did is it measured the brainwave activity of uh, human human subjects uh, and uh, it, it measured in particular the alpha waves uh, the researchers measured the alpha waves and the beta waves of the subjects now the alpha waves are associated with a calm alertness they're, they're associated with a relaxation effect it's not a, a sedating effect it's just a, a, a calm alert relaxed state beta waves in contrast are associated with an agitated um, anxious state again it's an alert state uh, alert state but it's it's an agitated anxious state so in order to have um, a, a calming effect what we really need to see is an increase in alpha wave state and a decrease in beta wave state and this is exactly what GABA does when you take 100 milligrams of GABA as a supplement there was a significant increase in the amount uh, in the amount of alpha waves recorded and a significant decrease in the amount of beta waves now when the 200 milligrams of L-theanine were taken the effect was the same but not to the same magnitude 
There was also an increase in the alpha waves of the brain, and there was also a decrease in the beta waves of the brain. However, those changes were not so pronounced as when um, the GABA was taken. So it appears that the actual effects on the brain are very similar. They appear L-theanine and GABA appear to have very similar effects in the brain in terms of changing the electrical excitability, and that in turn appears to have very similar effects on the brainwave patterns that are recorded uh, when you take those supplements. Now the reason that these two compounds may actually have very similar effects is because, like I said earlier, they are structurally very similar. GABA is made, um, it's synthesized from um, glutamic acid and L-theanine is also um, uh, synthesized from glutamic acid. So they're not actually structurally very different. Uh, and this is why they may actually be having uh, very similar effects uh, in the brain. Uh, how does GABA work? Well, GABA is a, a natural amino acid uh, in our brains. We synthesize GABA ourselves. If we take supplemental GABA, uh, there is evidence that it gets into the brain and it has the same effect as the natural GABA that we synthesize. It attaches to the GABA A receptor and also the GABA B receptor, but you know, perhaps we're more interested in the GABA A receptor because it's more associated with this relaxation and calm, uh, calming effect. Um, it asso associates with the, the, the GABA A receptor and this is actually a chloride channel and when this channel opens chloride ions will pass into neurons and when the chloride ions pass into neurons they decrease the electrical excitability because they lower the membrane potential of those neurons. So this means the neurons are less, less likely to fire, they're in a resting state um, and uh, you know if you have uh, this anxious agitated state, this, um, this you know, reasonably high concentration um, a reasonably high electrical excitability in your brain, uh, taking supplemental GABA will actually calm that down because it will decrease that electrical excitability. Um, so that's how GABA works. It works on the GABA A receptor. Uh, it works in exactly the same way as the GABA we synthesize in our brain. When we take in L-theanine, the L-theanine passes into the brain uh, and it may have uh, one of two effects. Firstly, it may also attach to the GABA A receptor. Uh, it's not entirely understood how it activates that receptor, but there is some good evidence that L-theanine will attach to the same receptor as GABA, and it will probably activate that receptor. There is some, uh, for example, evidence that if you um, give L-theanine to, to animals, uh, and then you um, give them a, a GABA inhibitor so that you prevent um, substances locking onto the GABA A receptor, the physiological effects of L-theanine are lost. In other words, blocking the GABA A receptor decreases the effectiveness of L-theanine. And that's good evidence that L-theanine is actually locking onto the GABA A receptor in exactly the same way as GABA. Now, because it's structurally slightly different, this may explain why it doesn't activate the receptor to such a high um, affinity as the original you know, GABA molecule. GABA is, is the ligand that is supposed to attach to that receptor, so it probably has a much better affinity for that receptor. L-theanine's structurally similar, but not quite the same, so it probably activates the receptor, but perhaps not quite the same, uh, and that perhaps um, is why uh, it's not quite so effective as GABA. However, there is another way that L-theanine may actually be working in the brain, uh, and because L-theanine is actually synthesized from glutamic acid, uh, it may actually lock onto um, glutamate receptors. Um, and these receptors are usually, um, when glutamate receptors are activated, they increase electrical excitability. So the supposition here from research is that the L-theanine may actually be blocking the glutamate receptors. Because it's structurally similar to um, glutamic acid, um, it may actually lock onto the receptor but not activate it and that will prevent the, glutam uh, the glutamate in the brain activating the receptor. So it's actually blocking the receptor from the natural um, glutamate we have in our brain and that decreases electrical excitability. Both of those effects are exactly the same. If you block the glutamate receptor or you activate the GABA receptor, they both cause a decrease in electrical excitability and that is the way that L-theanine may be working in the brain. So. Um, comparing the two, I can't, you know, it's very difficult to say um, which compound would be more anxiolytic, but this is only one single study. It was only taking into account, you know, the brainwave patterns. There are other things that need to be taken into account. But if you compare the two, you know, the information that I've seen suggests that actually supplemental GABA uh, may actually be, um, you know, having exactly the same effects as L-theanine, uh, but it may actually be more effective. Now, the reason I thought this video was useful is because I see a lot of people talking about and taking L-theanine as an anti-anxiety anti compound. I don't see so many people talking about taking GABA. 
uh, and it f from from you know from this study it appears that GABA is actually working in the same way but it's actually more effective than the L-theanine so it's something to consider uh, perhaps something to look into um, you know it's, it's one of those things that's very difficult to actually uh, quantify um, but you know the evidence that's there suggests that these two compounds are so similar they may actually be working in the same way uh, and this may be why um, drinking tea uh, is so relaxing it's effectively working on the GABA system uh, in the brain decreasing electrical excitability increasing that alpha wave state uh, and really um, putting you in the same kind of state as if you were um, you know as if you were manufacturing uh, large amounts of GABA in your brain which would be associated with the same changes so I hope you found that interesting as always eat well stay healthy and protect yourself and I'll see you soon for another video take care